much inspiration uh, did you draw from developments in biology, or chemistry, things like that? Some. I mean, only because you start seeing how the sciences work. Yeah. The so-called human sciences are very different from the natural sciences in all sorts of ways. I mean, in the natural sciences, for example, uh, if you have a theory, some kind of a theory, and you get counterexamples, you try to hold on to the theory and get rid of the data. Uh, so a famous case in the 19th century, the, uh, it was discovered that the orbit of Uranus the planet Uranus. Yes, you, you were talking about that yes, yeah, it, yesterday. Well, it's a famous case in the yes, 19th century. But, is. Uh, I think even Kepler or Galileo would no, be the, examples. When why, did, why don't things fly off the, well, the Earth? Galileo could not explain why things... they should. But the same with Greeks. Yes. You go back to the uh -huh. Greeks, one of the major problems in Greek science, science and mathematics, mm -hmm. when distinguished, was the discovery of the irrational numbers. Yes. So if you take the diagonal of a square, mm -hmm. it's incommensurable with the sides of the square, which was considered like, um, you know, discovering that God doesn't exist or something. <laughs> but they didn't throw away geometry. They tried yes. to figure out what's going on. And the same with the orbit of Uranus. They didn't say, okay, let's throw away Newton's laws. Uh, they asked, well, you know, what could be doing it? And pretty soon, Mm -hmm. Duvalier uh, discovered uh, an extra planet out there, New Neptune, okay, that accounted for it by Newton's laws. In the human sciences, it's quite different. If you find a counterexample, you throw away everything. Um, it's just totally irrational. In fact, the whole dominant line of kind of inquiry that goes on into human behavior, from looking at ape languages to analyzing corpuses to... Uh, uh, misunderstanding generalizations is completely different from the natural sciences for not recent, I mean, I mean back to the Greeks and uh, that has to be overcome so in this sense, yes, it was influential, I mean, noticing I mean, there were major really major errors in the natural sciences all the way into the 20th century, which were not understood and are very similar to what you read in, say, philosophy of language today so for example, it's a big argument in philosophy of mind, philosophy of language, is uh, uh, alleged the problem is supposed to be that you can't reduce the study of mental acts to physical behavior. You can't find the yes. big problem. And that was a problem in chemistry until yeah. the 1930s. You know, when I was a kid, you know, people assumed that the major scientists, you know, Nobel Prize winners, thought that chemistry is just a computational technique. Yes. It can't be real because you can't reduce it to physics. Well, in fact, it's, it's these little things you uh, you paint on blackboard and uh, just calculating devices. It's a technique for calculating the results yes. of experiments. Uh, the molecular theory of gases was treated the same way. Well, where's the molecules? You know, Poincaré, you know, one of the major yes. scientists of the 20th century said that we can't take the molecular theory of gases seriously. Uh, who can see the molecules? You know? But uh, I mean, my my take on Poincaré is uh, he should have been uh, the one to uh, to discover or to propose uh, relativity. He pretty but, near uh, did. He, he, was, he pretty he was, much did. He was very close, but he didn't give it a, a realist interpretation. He gave it a positivist interpretation. He, <laughs> it looks as if things were like that. And then Einstein came along and said, well, yeah, actually like things that. are. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, he did more than that. He developed a mathematical theory of it. But uh, I mean, even if you look at Einstein, uh, immediately after Einstein's famous 1905 paper, Special Theory of Relativity, uh, experimental physicists started studying it in Germany, where the main experimental physics was, and they refuted it. You know, they had experiment after experiment that showed it didn't work. Uh, younger scientists completely disregarded the experiments. I mean, it was so obviously true that they didn't care what the experiments were. They just waited to find out what's wrong with the experiments. In fact, that goes on up till uh, 1930s. And there's a f you read someday the uh, correspondence between Max Born and Einstein, mm -hmm. Max Born, famous physicist. Uh, 
in the late 1920s, Max Born, who followed experimental physics much more closely than Einstein did, uh, pointed out to Einstein in the correspondence that a, a famous uh, American experimental physicist had apparently uh, disproven the Michelson-Morley experiment, yeah. the famous experiment, which is part of the basis for relativity theory about ether and so on. Uh, he said, look, he seems to have disproven it. And then the correspondence is quite interesting. Both Einstein and Born take it for granted that the experiment's wrong. And uh, Born asks Einstein, do you think it would be worthwhile to go look closely at this guy's experiment and see what's wrong with it? And Einstein says, well, you know, who cares or something. But, uh, and then finally, some years later, you know, people redid the experiment and found there were statistical errors and so on. Uh, but that's typical of the sciences, mm -hmm. as I say, all, all the way back to the Greek, it, and a very sharp break from the human sciences. Anyhow, to get back to the chemistry case, what is not quite understood is that the f it, it, it happened to be true that chemistry could not be reduced to physics. It was true. And the reason it was discovered, physics was wrong. Uh, it wasn't until the quantum theoretic revolution took place that you then had a way of giving an interpretation of, say, the chemical bond, you know, makes yes. in terms of uh, if you give a quantum theoretic explanation. In fact, Linus Pauling got the Nobel Prize for this in 1935. Uh, but until then, chemistry could so not be reduced to physics. Unification turned out to be closer to chemistry than it to was, uh, Chemistry didn't has, change. Yes. Physics changed. Mm -hmm. And they were unified. It was, it was never reduced. It couldn't be reduced. And very likely the same will be true about uh, I mean, a lot more was known about uh, uh, physics and chemistry than is known today about mental acts and the brain. Yeah. So the fact that they can't be unified, we don't know what that means. Could right. mean that all right. the neurology is wrong.